I teach Australian history and public history in the Department of Modern History at, here at Macquarie and um, I had been concerned for a while about declining lecture attendance in my Australian history units. So I was looking at different ways in which I might embrace technology in order to um, foster a more kind of active engagement amongst my students. I'm really um, interested in always challenging my students' assumptions about Australian history. A lot of my students come to um, their Australian history units with an assumption that it's going to be boring. Um, a lot of them do it because they're going to become teachers themselves, so they feel obliged to um, undertake Australian history units. So what I want to do is to, for them to leave my classrooms excited and passionate about teaching Australian history. Um, so I looked um, into developing uh, flipped learning methodologies and integrating them into my teaching of Australian history and so back into 2013 with the help of the Learning and Teaching Centre I undertook training in blended and flipped learning and that I, I then wanted to use in my own teaching. So once I'd picked up a few skills and um, had undertaken you know, some reading around flipped uh, learning, um, I was um, actively encouraged by my head of department, Professor Sean Brawley, who was encouraging his entire department to, to think about flipping, to experiment with flipping uh, their teaching. Um, and so what I decided to do um, in collaboration with my colleagues, and we we, we teach, um, we have a lovely kind of collegial uh, learning and teaching culture within the Department of Modern History. We often discuss our various techniques. So I produced video lectures and podcasts for students to listen to before class um, to take away the kind of um, the very passive large group, although it wasn't that such a large group anymore because fewer people were coming to lectures, um, to move away from that model and to, to get them to engage with lectures before coming to class. And then what I did was extend what was the traditional tutorial time into um, a two hour space, um, which provided a much more um, active learning experience for my students. Then after class, I get my students to um, contribute to a blog post where they then reflect on the learning that they have undergone that week. And they talk about whether they're, um, or write about whether their learning has been transformed as a result. So I gathered data um, from students. I flipped two of my uh, units uh, last year in 2015, um, uh, MHIS 302, Australian History since 1901, and MHIS 114, um, The World Since 1945, uh, An Australian Perspective. Um, so one's a 300 level unit, one's a 100 level unit. The response from students in the 300 level unit was overwhelmingly positive. All of them really enjoyed um, the ways in which um, they could engage with lectures before class because they were forced to engage with lectures before class, it meant that they watched them and listened to them. They felt much more um, obligated to engage with their learning materials before coming to class. As a result of that, the face-to-face -face time in class was much more productive, I felt, and they felt. Um, we had a lot more time and space to discuss issues and content at a much deeper level than we had been able to do in much shorter tutorial times. The response was a little different from the 100 level students. I think that students who've come straight from school usually are much less confident about their learning capacities. They're much more used to the uh, more passive mode of learning. So it seems to me that maybe um, I mean, a lot of them were also very positive about the ways in which flipped learning encouraged them to be independent learners. Um, they really enjoyed the flexibility of listening to lectures, you know, as they drove to uni, as they sat on the train listening um, on their iPhones or their tablets. Um, they loved the fact that they could, you know, choose as and when to listen to lectures and when to engage with learning materials. But I do think that, you know, um, perhaps more advanced students, higher level students, um, were able to engage um, sometimes in more productive ways with that kind of material. That said, um, the students at both levels really enjoyed the much more um, extended class time that they had. I think that it encouraged them to learn much more effectively. I think it produced much more effective communities of learning. And many of them uh, talked about the ways in which um, they benefited from learning about people's different ideas, 
different um, understandings of the world. And for me, that meant that uh, the flipped classroom has a much greater potential to produce um, agentic learners. It has a much greater potential um, uh, to transform people's assumptions about um, their knowledge, not just of Australian history, but also about their place in the world. Because what I want my students to do is to not just, you know, learn about Australian history um, in the, across the 20th century. I want them to think about themselves as, um, as bodies in time, to think about their own um, place in the world, and then to take that knowledge, to take that, um, those skills um, related to critical thinking and analysis that they've you know, fostered in the classroom out into the real world, and to think about how that knowledge um, uh, encourages them to be active citizens. So, um, I, have, I think it's really important to get students to reflect on the ways in which their knowledge is transformed as a result of their learning experiences. Um, I do think that the flipped classroom has transformed many students' knowledge. Um, and I've asked them, of course, to produce a blog post at the end of each class, which they then gather towards the end of the semester uh, to reflect on their learning across all the weeks. However, at the same time, I'm conscious that we don't often teach how um, students should articulate um, their reflections. Um, so I think I want to spend a little bit more time in my units in future years thinking about how to teach those skills of critical reflection. Um, uh, and I think we have much to learn about that.